In this video we're going to go over critical numbers in calculus. We're going to start with the definition, um, give you a couple of examples from a pictorial standpoint, and then we're going to take a look at graphs and determine what the critical numbers are from just looking at the graphs. Alright, so um, a critical number. Here our definition states that if f is defined as c, okay, so the original function has to be defined as c, which is a very important part of this definition. If f prime of c equals 0, or if f is not differentiable at c, then c is a critical number of f. Okay, so pretty straightforward. We've got two scenarios. Either the derivative equals 0, or the derivative doesn't exist. Then we know we've got a critical point. And this is when we are looking at the original function. Okay, so if this is um, my original function f of x, all right, right here, I've got a cusp going on at C. All right, so F prime of C doesn't exist because we don't have a derivative at a cusp. So then I know that X equals C is going to be a critical number. Okay, if I had another, say, maybe just an upside down parabola here, okay, at C, right there at that maximum peak, all right, I've got a horizontal tangent, which means if I've got a horizontal tangent, then that means that my derivative is zero at that point. So therefore, C is a critical number. Okay, so some things that you're looking for on that original function. All right, now there is a theorem that goes along with this. It says if F, the original function, has a relative max or min at X equals C, then C is a critical number of F. Okay, so you know it's gonna be occurring at your maxes and mins. Okay, critical numbers occur also where the derivative doesn't exist. Okay, so now let's take this definition and as opposed to algebraically applying it, let's apply it to some graphs. All right, let's suppose that they tell you to find the critical numbers and then give a reason why it's a critical number. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one right here. Okay, this is my original function function, you always have to make sure and determine what this is. Is this a graph of the function or is it a graph, say, of the derivative? And then your thinking has to shift based on that. Okay, so since I am looking at the original function here, I'm going to be looking for maxes and mins. I'm going to be looking for any place that the derivative might not exist. Okay, so I don't have necessarily, well, I do have a min right there, but the minimum is at a cusp. All right, and we should realize that if the original function has a cusp, then the derivative does not exist right there. And when the derivative doesn't exist, then we know we have a critical number. All right, so my critical numbers for this one, critical numbers, all right, are at x equals 0. And then why? Because f prime of 0 does not exist because the derivative doesn't exist. Okay, so that one's pretty straightforward. All right, now in this second example, okay, I've got a funky little curve here. It again is labeled f of x, so I know this is my original function. That's good, so I'm gonna be looking for places that my derivative doesn't exist. I'm gonna be looking for maxes and mins because my derivative would be zero at that spot. Okay, so right off the bat, I see a couple cusp right here. Okay, so there's a cusp right here at negative 2, there's a cusp right there at 2. Alright, so when there's a cusp, the derivative does not exist. Okay, so critical numbers. What we got going here? Okay, so at x equals negative 2. Alright, I have one because, why? Well, because the derivative at negative 2 does not exist. Alright, and then I've got another one at x equals 2 because the derivative at 2 does not exist. All right, now keep looking at the picture. All right, looks like I've got a max. <clears throat> we're going to say right there, since it's a hand-drawn graph, we're going to say that that max is right there. All right, at that maximum point, I would have a horizontal tangent, all right, which means that the derivative is 0. So I also have a critical number at x equals 0 because the derivative at 0 is zero. I've got a horizontal tangent there which makes that derivative zero. All right, now in this third example right here, all right, you got to pay attention. I am looking at the derivative, so I'm no longer looking at the original function. I am looking at the derivative. Okay, now the two things that qualifies to be a critical number is when the derivative, here, um, 
equals zero, or when the derivative does not exist. All right, so I've got to be thinking backwards. I've got to be looking at my function. Well, where is the derivative zero? All right, is there any place that this derivative is zero? Okay, well, yeah, the derivative is zero at x equals negative three. All right, so I've got to think backwards when I'm looking at my picture. Okay, so therefore, I have critical numbers at x equals negative 3 because f prime of negative 3 equals 0. Okay, now I've got to go through now and see um, there's no place else that equals 0. So let's go through and see if there's any place that the derivative doesn't exist. This entire function is the derivative. I have a hole right there, which means the derivative doesn't exist right there, and that is that x equals 1. So my other critical number would be x equals 1 because f of 1 does not exist. All right, so um, taking a look at critical numbers and finding critical numbers when given the graph. And I would say the number one important part is make sure are you looking at the function itself or are you looking at the derivative? Because when you're looking at the derivative, you've got to think backwards about the definition. Okay, so just two things to definitely keep straight there. Um, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.